One six nine. Say it means we got shots fired. Four fifteen A S F. We have a caller right now, Gail, calling from Las Vegas on KBET. She was in the crowd. She was shot at. She has something to say that you're not going to hear from Jonas Schimmel on NBC. Gail, line seven, go ahead. You have the floor. Oh, hi there. Um, first off, I've never been in the military, and I'm not a pro by any means on guns or anything like that. But when we were running, because we were out in the open and everything, we were running near the um, vendor tents. And we were just, you know, easy shots. There was a Metro police officer out there that saw us running, and he ran and he grabbed me and pulled my husband and him into the vendor tent. They're like little plastic tents. And we went down, and we could hear all the shooting. And we would hear them load and then stop shooting, or, you know, shoot and then stop shooting and load. And while we were laying there, this officer was covering me, um, because of all the shots and the thing that we've noticed and my husband noticed too and I think even the Metro police officer there were shots that were higher pitched there were shots that were lower sounding and they were going at the same time and the lower shots were getting closer to us and I'm thinking oh my god there's somebody walking in the crowd spraying their gun back and forth and shooting people and he was getting closer the shots would stop. The officer got up and walked out, and I heard his, his radio because I was right there, and we heard we have active shooters, and then my officer who was been protecting me said, where is he, where is he, do you see him, is he behind us, do you have a visual? And then the shot... So you're stopped. saying there was a shooter in the crowd going around shooting people in the crowd? We don't know, and that's what... My husband and I are trying to figure out. But you said you heard two different types of gunfire. And here he is, winner of the National Radio Hall of Fame Award, Michael Savage. Guys, get down! Go that way! Get out of here! There's gunshots coming from over there! Go that way! There's gunshots right here! Hey, they're shooting right at us, guys. Everybody stay down. Stay down. That's the sound of a real man. Las Vegas Police Department. You're not listening to the sound of the ACLU undermining the police. But today's topic is not about the vermin in the media, the vermin in these activist groups funded by the worst man on the planet. It is about what actually occurred. Who actually did the shooting? Were there more that was there more than one shooter? The reason we are asking this is because even an untrained ear can hear the different sounds of several different guns. We know the lunatic allegedly had 29 different guns, which makes no sense unto itself. If a man is going to go do a crazy thing like this, he would not bring weapons that have different caliber ammunition. That's something that the Knish on late night television doesn't understand. That's something that Woody Allen wouldn't understand. It's something Larry David wouldn't understand. It's something that maybe Robert Nero would understand from all the horror movies he has been involved in, all the shootings. Okay, so you had several different weapons with different calibers being shot by the same man, right? Wrong. It's impossible to believe that. An AR-15 shoots a 223. An M60 shoots a 7.62. An AK-47 also shoots a 7.62. Why would a man want to confuse ammunition in the middle of such an event? He wouldn't. Something's wrong with the picture. In addition to this, we have a caller on the line who has been gracious enough to stay over. She's Gail. She's calling from Las Vegas on my affiliate KBET. She was actually shot at. She's not a late-night crybaby comedian making believe he knows what the hell he's talking about. She was shot at. She said she heard two different types of sounds, meaning two different types of guns. But worse than that, in terms of this investigation that's being covered up, she said she believes there was a man going through the crowd, shooting at people in the crowd. Gail, I don't want to put words in your mouth. Welcome back. Thanks for staying on the line. Please tell your story all over again to a brand new audience on the Savage Nation. 
Okay. Well, we were when we were first there, we heard the popping of the sound, and we thought it was a firecracker, you know. And it was only like, you know, three or four pop, pop, pops. And then it got quiet, and then a couple more pop, 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 pops, and then it just started spraying, you know, it just like, just nonstop bullets shooting. So everybody started running, and we just ducked. You know, my husband and I, we just went on the ground and froze. And I remember, you know, there's a girl that was standing right next to me that was shot in the stomach, and she had a huge bullet wound in her stomach. It was huge. It wasn't a little tiny thing, and she was bleeding profusely. Um, I was horrible, and, and then people were just freaking out, and so everybody ran, and we were just still standing there, and my husband said, Gail, we got to go, we got to go, we got to run, we're going to get shot, so we got up and we started running toward the um, vendor tents, they're the white plastic tents, and there was mm -hmm. a metro police officer that was out there, and he saw us running, and he, he said, come here, come here, get here, and he grabbed me, and he pulled us inside the tent, and we went down. And we, the shots kept going and going, and then they would stop. And then we were like, okay, okay, it's okay, we're, it's all over. And then they would start all over again. And it seemed to me, and I'm not a pro on guns and bullets, anything, but there was like higher sounding bullets and then a really lower, deeper bullet. And as we were laying there, it, it sounded like, the shots were getting closer to us, and I'm going, oh, my God, oh, my God, we're going to get shot. They're going to see us in this tent because it seemed like somebody, I had not seen this by any means, but to me it sounded like somebody was actually walking from the crowd from west to east through the crowd and shooting because everybody was going in one direction because there was no way out. And then they would stop, and then it would be like, higher pitches and then no sound so and then the sound would start again but they were on top of each other it sounded and i was freaking out you know obviously well, hold on you just said they would be on top of each other meaning the higher sounding bullet yeah. and then the lower sounding or let's say the sound of one gun higher than lower and they were coming at you at, at, at the same time they yes they sounded at the same time and the one that was lower kept getting closer sounding to us and i'm thinking your brain goes through all these uh, images and thoughts and i'm thinking oh my god it sounds like there's somebody on the ground that is shooting and what was so bizarre about this is that mandalay bay was on our right this this creep was on the whatever 32nd floor and the girl that was standing right beside me, maybe seven, eight inches behind me, got shot straight in her stomach, right above her belly button. Now, how does a bullet come straight down and make a left turn and hit her in the stomach? And I don't understand that. It. It wait, wait, hold on. I don't understand. So the, the hotel is on the right, but she got shot from the left? She got shot straight in the center. We were facing due south. Oh, so you were facing you were facing away from the hotel, Gail. I want to be clear. You were facing away from the hotel. Our right shoulder would be facing Mandalay Bay. The okay, on the right shoulder, there's the hotel. Now your stomach is facing diagonal to that hotel, and you're saying the girl next to you is facing in the same direction as you and your husband. Yes, we were both facing west. Direct. Okay, so you're asking how could she get struck directly? in her stomach from that direction when there was allegedly no shooter there. Well, see, that's what's so bizarre, because I even thought that. Because how could a bullet be coming from our right, which was on our west, we're facing direct south, a bullet would have to come straight up and make a 90-degree left turn and go into her stomach. Gail, you know, has, anyone, has anyone from L LA, uh, Las Vegas Metro interviewed you? Um, yeah, not from... No, not from there, but I've had other interviews with, like, CBS, and I was mentioned at the White House by Sarah Huckabee, you know. Um, but did, did you tell the story that you just told about two different sounds of two different sounding guns? They seem south, yes. No, no. Did no. you tell that? Did you tell what you just told my audience to the other folks who have interviewed you? Did, did you say that exact thing? No, because no one asked me that. <laughs> oh, oh! No one asked you that. The knishes in the media didn't ask you that. 
No. A hot a hot dog has more an, an ad, a more analytical ability than most people in the media. Gail, listen to me. What you have just said on this program will make the news. No. And I'm not going to divulge your name. I don't want you to be exposed to this. Frankly, if I were you, Gail, I would not give any more interviews. Listen to me very carefully, Gail. Yes, sir. Please do not give any more interviews. Do not divulge your name. Disappear into the night, Gail. Well, they're finding me. I don't know how, but I haven't given any interviews except to the um, CBS, and they're very gracious, you know. And well, they're very gracious. Be careful with them. They're not very gracious. Uh, they're very dangerous. Oh. Uh, Gail, I'm going to let you go because I don't want you to be on this phone any longer. I just want to thank you for surviving and for being an eyewitness to an American tragedy. Did you hear that call?